Okay, chapter 3.3. .3. This is all about what we call bright field microscopy, which is just basically saying we're shining light through something and looking at it. Uh, we'll talk about how we can use this, uh, and we'll talk about how we use what we call a compound microscope to observe objects and to focus them. Okay, big warning here. If you go to the book, uh, there is a ton of detail in here that we don't need. We're focusing on the basics. Uh, we'll do some of this in lab. Um, so just focus on what I'm showing you here. Okay, so our light microscopy or bright field microscopy. Uh, this uses curved lenses uh, to refract light and magnify. So this is a low magnification. It's got a low curve. This would be a 10 times or 10x magnification. So light is shining up through this piece of glass. And then we have a sample here. It's really, really thin because the light has to go through it. It gets refracted and then it goes into the lens and we would be up at the top and we can see it. This is called an objective lens. It's the one that's right next to the sample. Okay, so you can see here, uh, if we had two points, they kind of blur together um, as the intensity of light goes up. Um, we can't really resolve tiny structures well. What we need is what we call a higher power magnification lens. You can see there's a much more aggressive curve here. Um, and this would be a 100x uh, light microscope objective lens. This is the strongest lens that we will use. If we look at the resolution, it's much, much greater, right? We can tell these two different points apart, but you'll notice the light is getting refracted much more here. Uh, it's going very wide. And uh, to capture all of that light, we need our lens to be very, very close to the sample. So when we do this in the lab, uh, it's gonna be a little scary because our lenses are gonna get really, really close to the sample. So this lens, as I said, is called an objective lens. It sits above our specimen, light shines through our specimen into the lens. The higher the curve on there, the better the magnification. But there's a limit here, right? Um, we talked about resolution. Once we get past about 100x, we just can't capture enough light to actually see anything in there. And that's why uh, we have to do a special trick here. So I've been talking about a single lens here. What if you take two lenses and uh, put them in order? So this is what our compound microscope, so compound means two things together, right? Compound microscopes do this. So if we look here, uh, there's a lot of intermediates here. Don't worry about all this stuff here. We have our light source at the bottom. It shines light up. It gets focused onto our slide. Then we have our specimen, so the light goes through it into our objective lens, which is the ones that we were looking at. So the light comes through into the objective lens. Then it shines up this tube to a second lens that we call the ocular or eyepiece lens. Ocular uh, means eye. This lens has a 10x magnification, okay? So we have several different objective lenses. We saw low magnification, right? We have a 4X on ours, a 10X, a 40X, and a 100X, that aggressive curved one. This one requires some special oil to help. I'll show you that in a moment. So it shines through one lens, goes through the second lens, and then into our eye. How much has it been magnified? Well, Whatever our objective lens is, we take that magnification and multiply it by the ocular lens magnification, which is always 10x. That gives us our total. So our max magnification, what is our max magnification for this? It would be 100 times 10 is 1000x. That might sound like a lot, but we still can't see viruses, remember? Um, so... These compound microscopes, we'll talk about them in detail in the lab and how they work. Um, I mentioned that that 100X lens needs something special. We call this immersion oil, which it literally is what it sounds like. We place a drop of oil on our sample, uh, on our slide, and that helps change the refraction of light. So you can see here, without the oil, 
the light comes through and gets refracted and misses the lens. Uh, so it's going to be really, really dark because most of the light is not going into the lens. If instead we replace the air here with oil, oil has a different refractive index, it's called, and it bends more of the light into the eyepiece. So to do this super high magnification, 100x objective lens, we have to use this immersion oil, otherwise we can't see anything. We'll talk about this in the lab. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, but we will do it uh, very, very carefully. Okay, so that's just magnification, right? We still have the focus aspect of things. And focus, uh, we can think about in a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna show you uh, this image here. This is a micrograph. Some of the cells are in focus and some of them aren't. Um, you can see here there's no stain, so there's not a lot of contrast. We're gonna look at this diagram over here. Okay, in object A, uh, we have a glass slide here. So this is like our microscope, we've turned it on its side basically. So uh, our sample is here and our lens is here. If our lens is too close, the focal point is not correctly aligned. Okay, you can see the focal point is actually below our slide here. So we can see something, but it's kind of fuzzy here, right? It's got this halo around it. If we raise this lens upwards to adjust the focal point to exactly where our object is, now it comes in a nice crisp focus. You can see all the detail here. Okay, same thing can happen if we go too far. We now, they kind of look transparent or um, we can see through them, they're kind of hollow. This is because the focal point is too high. So we actually adjust this focal point, the lens up and down using the focus knob on our microscope. I'll teach you exactly how to do this in the lab. Now, this is assuming that our bacteria are laying flat, if this is my slide, that they're laying flat on there. What if they're like this, right? Um, that can happen, and that leads to some weird looking things, right? You can see, even though we're in focus on one of these bacterial cells, the chain, part of it's uh, out of focus above and below the focal point. So, not everything looks perfect, right? The images from the microscope that I show you in the lecture slides, they're gonna look a lot better than yours because they're cherry picked. They're the best of the best. They're perfect. The sample is perfectly aligned. So don't despair if you have trouble getting perfect images. Okay, so how is this useful? Well, what if I told you that instead of a very expensive bulky microscope, we could do some of this with a cell phone, a small 3D printed stand, and a little uh, cell phone microscope here with the little pen light that we put in here. What do you think the benefits of this are as a diagnostic tool? So diagnostic, right, means to diagnose, to figure out what's wrong. Uh, how could this be useful? Think about that for a second. Well, what about places that uh, are very remote, rural areas? Um, countries that don't have strong infrastructure, right? This is small. Uh, our light microscopes that we have in the lab, very big, very bulky, very delicate, right? This is, this is somewhat rugged. We can take it out into the field. And we'll see that we can actually diagnose a lot of illnesses just by looking under a microscope. So it's cheap, it's fast, uh, it's very powerful. But what are some of the limitations of this? Well, you gotta have a cell phone, right? Uh, but actually, a lot of the world has this. You have to have uh, the uh, lenses here for this to work, and the magnification is not perfect, right? We can't do perfect sample prep. Uh, we probably have limits on uh, what stains we have available to us, and probably the resolution might be a little bit low. But what kind of pathogens would this be good for? What are our big pathogens? We haven't talked too much about it, but if you think about that uh, cell diagram that I showed you earlier, you had your red blood cell. What was bigger than that? Eukaryotic parasites, things like uh, trypanosomes and things like that, malaria. These are all problems in rural areas, uh, particularly in the developing world, that can be quickly diagnosed with something like this. So these kinds of um, small microscopes like this, 
seem very simple, very basic, but they're very powerful as diagnostic tools. Okay, so we talked about compound microscopes that have magnification by using two lenses. We have the objective lens that's right next to the sample and the ocular lens, which is the eyepiece lens. We multiply those magnifications together to get our total magnification. And so I want to reiterate that light microscopy shines light through the sample. So we really need thin samples that are transparent. This is why if I stuck my finger under our microscope, we wouldn't be able to see anything because it's too thick, right? Light's not really going to shine well through my finger. Um, so we'll talk about that in the lab a little bit more. All right, that's it for 3.3.